Hi kids, welcome back to Mrs. Where is Mrs. Taylor? I only see me, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. How do you like my blinking nose? I hope it stays on. Anyway, you know it's me, Mrs. Taylor. Today, obviously, what do you think we're going to be reading about? You're right. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, one of my favorite reindeers. And I would love to read a poem beforehand. I'm probably going to have to keep turning on my nose because it doesn't last very long, but it's kind of fun. This one's called I'm a Little Reindeer. I'm a little reindeer ready to fly. I pull Santa's sleigh up in the sky. Christmas is here. We can't be late. All the children just cannot wait. Let's try it again. I'll say it, then you say it. I'm a little reindeer, ready to fly. I pull Santa's sleigh up in the sky. Christmas is here. We can't be late. All the children just can't wait. Great. I think it also goes to I'm a little teapot. Let me try that. I'm a little reindeer ready to fly. I pull Santa's sleigh up in the sky. Christmas is here. We can't be late. All the children just cannot wait. Cool. It sounds better when you put it to a tune. I have a special visitor today. My little pal, Rudolph. I love him in his little winter hat. It's going to be kind of cold. I guess we're going to get some snow maybe this week. So this is perfect weather for you. You have one more week and you've got to get ready to go, right? Yeah, okay. Well, obviously, I'm going to read Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Have you seen it on TV? Gosh, this, I think I saw it when I was a little girl, which tells you how old this is. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Way up at the North Pole, there's a special place called Christmas Town. Families of reindeer live in cozy caves. Elves work at the factory making presents for children. In Santa's castle, Mrs. Claus makes sure he eats plenty so that his holiday suit fits just right. Everyone loves living in Christmas Town, except for one year when the weather was so bad that Christmas was almost canceled. I'll turn my nose on in a little bit. One spring, Donner, the lead reindeer who helped pull Santa's sleigh each Christmas, became a proud papa. He and his wife named their son Rudolph. Soon after little Rudolph was born, his tiny red nose began to glow. Great bouncing icebergs, exclaimed Santa when he saw this. If Rudolph's nose continued to glow, Santa said, he would never make the sleigh team when he grew up. Now Donner taught Rudolph all the things a young reindeer needed to know, especially to beware of the abominable snow monster. All the while, he hid Rudolph's nose under a cover and hoped it would someday stop glowing. Excuse me. As the months went by, the elves were busy making Christmas toys. All the elves loved their work except for one, Hermie. He just didn't have a knack for toy making. Maybe that's because he dreamed of becoming a dentist one day. <laughs> this made him feel like a misfit among his fellow elves. Rudolph felt like a misfit too. He didn't like the nose cover he had to wear because without it, as you know, 
His nose glowed as brightly as ever, but Donner was determined to keep that a secret. On the day of the annual reindeer games, Rudolph met Clarice, a pretty young doe. When Clarice said she liked him, Rudolph was so excited that he flew through the air with joy. Flying was exactly what Comet the coach was trying to teach that young reindeer. Everyone was amazed by Rudolph until his nose cover fell off. Uh-oh. All the other reindeer, except for Clarice, laughed at Rudolph and called him names, and Comet said, From now on, we won't let Rudolph join in any reindeer games. And Rudolph went off by himself, feeling sad. At the toy factory, Hermie was having trouble, too. He skipped off practice so he could fix Doll's teeth, thinking he might fit in better that way. When the foreman found out, he yelled, Come to elf practice and learn to wiggle your ears and chuckle warmly and do important stuff like that, or you'll never fit in. But Hermie just couldn't. He ran away instead. Before long, Hermie and Rad Rudolph met and shared their stories. They decided to go off into the world together. You won't mind my red nose? asked Rudolph. Not if you don't mind me being a dentist, replied Hermie. It's a deal, said Rudolph. On their first day, they heard the abominable snow monster's terrible roar. He must have seen your nose, cried Hermie. And the two friends tried to stay far ahead of the monster. Soon they met Yukon Cornelius and his dog sled team. Now Yukon was looking for gold, but he found Rudolph and Hermie instead. Then Rudolph's glowing nose let the abominable snow monster find them all. Uh-oh. Thanks to Yukon's quick thinking, though, they escaped on an ice floe. The ice floe carried them to the island of misfit toys, a place that was filled with odd-looking toys. The ruler of the island, King Moonracer, said, A toy is never truly happy until it is loved by a child. Now Rudolph promised the king that someday he would tell Santa about all these homeless toys, and maybe Santa would include them in his Christmas deliveries to children around the world. Rudolph asked King Moonracer if he and his friends could stay on the island of misfit toys. The island is not for living things, said the king. It's only for misfit toys. Well, how do you like that, said Yukon. Even among misfits, we're misfits. The king let the friends rest overnight before they moved on. And when Hermie and Yukon were asleep, Rudolph slipped away. Knowing that his nose would put them in constant danger with the abominable snow monster, he didn't want to be the cause of any harm to his friends. Now, the abominable snow monster did indeed find Rudolph because of his glowing nose. He chased the young reindeer everywhere, and during that time, Rudolph grew up, and one day he realized it's time to go home. He was gone for a long time. I didn't realize you were gone for a long time, Rudolph. Hmm. Meanwhile, Rudolph's parents and Clarice had been out looking for him ever since he left. It was now two days before Christmas Eve, and Santa told Rudolph that without Donner, he'd never be able to get to his sleigh and get the sleigh off the ground. Rudolph was determined to find his parents and Clarice 
and as he began to look for them, the storm of all storms hit. Thick snowflakes fell, making it hard to see. And I bet they said, Oh dear! That was, that was not a great joke. Rudolph had an idea where his parents and Clarice were, in the cave of the abominable snow monster. He made his way there despite the storm, and he found Clarice in the monster's clutches. Put her down, Rudolph cried. The abominable snow monster did, and he went after Rudolph instead. Yukon and Hermie, who had been searching for their friend, arrived at the cave just in time. Quickly, they lured the monster outside and knocked him out with a big rock. Then Hermie removed all of the monster's teeth. Finally, Hermie got to be a dentist. Oh, that had to hurt. When the abominable snow monster woke up, Yukon pushed him back and back and back until the monster, Yukon, and his dogs all slipped over the edge of a cliff. Oh no! Rudolph and his friends and family were heartbroken when they returned to Christmas Town. When the others heard the entire story, they realized that those who are different are important too. They all apologized to Rudolph and Hermie. The foreman even told Hermie he could open up his own dentist's office. And Santa agreed to find homes for all the misfit toys. What do you think misfit means? That's something to think about. Just then, there was a knock at the door. Oh my gosh! It was Yukon, his dogs, and the abominable snow monster. Even though they had all gone over the cliff, the abominable snow monster was able to bounce. And so they had all landed safely. Now the monster was no longer mean. Kind of reminds me of the Grinch. He even got a job. He placed the star on the top of the Christmas tree, and everyone cheered. The next day was Christmas Eve, but the weather was so bad that Santa could not fly his sleigh safely through it. He reluctantly started to tell everyone that Christmas was going to be canceled for the first time ever. But then he realized that there was a way through the storm after all. Rudolph, Santa said, you and that wonderful nose of yours, why that nose could cut through the murkiest storm. Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? And Rudolph replied, it will be an honor, sir. You saved Christmas Eve, Rudolph. The sleigh was loaded, the reindeer got into place, and Santa climbed aboard. Rudolph took the lead and the sleigh took off. Santa's first stop? You guessed it. The Island of Misfit Toys. Everyone had an extra Merry Christmas that year, and Rudolph went down in history as the greatest reindeer of all time. Merry Christmas. Wasn't that a great story? Rudolph, you saved the day. There are tons of, oh my gosh, reindeer activities that you, your teacher or you can download. Um, a couple of them that I like, especially for the little ones who are learning their letters and letter sounds. I thought this one was cute. They put an R for reindeer, and they made an uppercase and lowercase r out of brown, looks like brown construction paper, and then
They added some googly eyes and reindeer antlers. I thought that was cute. Another one for the older kids. Um, you can write a, a Rudolph story. Like I said, there's just tons of Rudolph and reindeer activities. Here's another one that you can color. You can make all sorts of activities with. Be a lot of fun. And Rudolph, thank you for joining me today. Now tomorrow we're going to do some more reindeer um, activities. And I'll tell you what, it's getting close to Christmas. Bye-bye.